Hi there, how are you? I heard that you will be stopping by today for story time. My name is Miss Cooley. I'm a board member with the New Jersey Literacy Association, better known as NJLA. And I have a story, a wonderful story to read to you. This story is called A Bicycle in Beijing. And before I get started, I wanna say thank you to Ray, Raycraft Publishing. Raycraft. So Raycraft is a publishing company and they were kind enough to deliver these books to our homes so that myself and the other board members could have them ready and available to read to boys and girls like you. I hope mom and dad or, or some adult that is somewhere nearby with you because in the end, when I finish the story, I'm going to share some important information with them so that they can help you um, possibly win a prize. We do have some prizes available for the hard work that you um what their boys and girls do. So, so without any further ado, here we are, A Bicycle in Beijing. Now this story was written by Dawu Yu, um, who is our author, the person that writes the story we call the author. But another thing about Mr. Yu is that he's also the illustrator. So that means that he did all the, illustrator did all the, Thank you. He did all the pictures in this book. So he's the author and the illustrator, which is quite unique and impressive. So if you look at the cover and the complete jacket, I can get a full picture here. Love that picture. Um, one of the things that um, I like to do and that I encourage my students to do as good readers is to look at the inside um, the jacket of the cover cover to see what this story is um, all about. Um, I surveyed my students a couple of weeks ago before we um, were out on this different um, time period here. And I asked them, what are some of the things that you do when you select a book that you want to read? Some of the things they told me were they look at the cover. They said that they flip through the book and look at pictures, which is something that I like to do. And then a couple of them said, I look inside the jacket and I read um, and see what the story is about. And so there is every, whenever you look at the inside of the jacket, you find a brief summary about the story. I'm going to read part of it to you, not all of it, because I don't want to give it all away. I want some of it to be a surprise for you. Um, but it says, a man fondly relives his childhood memory of his father's bicycle. Fondly. That means that when he thinks back about his childhood, these are good memories because he looks fondly. While living in one of Beijing's hutongs, I'm going to go over that with you, a boy returns home to find that his dad has purchased a shiny new bike. I'm going to stop there. Um, when I read that, before I read further and even looked at the book, I thought of, and I thought about the cover. I thought, wow, a shiny new bike. Who would the bike be for? Um, is it a bike for him? Is it a gift for him? Is it for someone else? What could this bike be for? Now, I didn't read the, all of that sentence or all of the summary because if I had finished the sentence, you would know who the bike's for. I want that to be a surprise for you. I'm going to review five vocabulary words with you before we start the story, because one of the other things that good readers do is they pay attention to the vocabulary words in stories, especially if some of the words are new to them um, or if some of the words have more than one meaning. So you might want to think about what the word means for this particular story. So the first word is acrobats. Can you say that with me? Acrobats, acrobats. Um, if you've ever been to a circus or seen a circus, maybe in a movie or on TV, you, you probably saw someone doing stunts and flips, uh, walking on a tightrope, uh, maybe doing tricks even on a bike. Those people were acrobats. Next word. Chirps. Chirps. Can you say that word with me? Chirps. Chirps are sounds that a certain animal makes. Which animal would Merck make the sound of chirps? Yes, birds. 
birds make the sounds of chirps. This one is a very unique word. This word is what we call uh, a text-specific word because this word is specific to this particular book. You're not going to find this in, in, in your average book. And it is a word specific to um, uh, the area where this book is written, which I didn't tell you, but we're going to go back to that. This word, um, I, I call it hutang, but is a Chinese word which is really pronounced wutang. Can you say wutang? Try it again. Wutang. Yes, wutang. And this is a, a neighborhood in China. I'm going to show you the pictures that's specific to it. It's a neighborhood in China. Um, it has these narrow um, alleyways behind and between houses, rows of houses. Petals. Petals. What are petals? Not petals on a flower, but petals. Hmm, it's about a bicycle. Petals. Say it again. Yes, it is a, a part of the bike where you put your feet and you help. That's how you move the bike along is by you put your feet and you move the petals. This word is steer. Try it again. Steer. And steer can mean a couple of different things. But for this particular book, it's what you do when you ride the bike and you put your hands on the handles and you guide it. So steer is how you, you guide the bike. Back to a bicycle in Beijing. Has anyone ever heard of Beijing before? Okay. So Beijing is the capital of China. We live in the United States, which is in North America. Um, China, Beijing is in China, and China is in uh, the continent of Asia. So a bicycle in Beijing. I'm going to show you one picture. I'm not going to, for the sake of time, I'm not going to show you all the pictures, but this one picture in particular I want to share with you because I want you to understand what uh, Wutang means. So when you look at this picture, and you see these houses here. You can see how we have these little rows. There's lots of houses, but there's rows. It's not really a street. There's there's alleys in between all these houses. Those are um, the hutangs in the various neighborhoods. And here, if you look at these buildings and how this strip of land separates these big buildings from this whole neighborhood. This in China was called... Um, was still referred to as the Forbidden City. And, and it was where the emperors used to live, which were um, people of royalty, the kings. Today it's called uh, Palace Museums because people can go, visitors and tourists can go visit um, uh, the Forbidden City. So you pay to go in and give you tickets, you go in and you just get to see uh, what the buildings look like on the inside. Um, but it was forbidden at that time because people had to have permission from the emperors to go into these buildings and these beautiful buildings. Um, but now for our story. When I was a little boy, my family lived in a hutang in the Andingman neighborhood of Beijing. And I've already showed you this picture. Every day after school, I did my homework. Then I ran outside to play with my friends in the hutang Every day was the same. So no different than what you may do in, um, here in, in, in New Jersey or wherever you are. You come home, you do your homework, you might get a snack, go outside and play with your friends. But what I noticed here, which is interesting, um, and I didn't tell you, I did a little bit of research with a friend of mine who grew up in China, actually in Beijing, and she gave me some important information. I see these older gentlemen here. They're playing Chinese chess. And I noticed in the picture, there's a wide range of, in ages of, of everyone that's living here. So I see older people, I see a man with a cane, the older men, a woman with a baby, the school kids. Um, and over here, there's some more kids playing around. And she explained to me that in the Chinese culture, um, Four generations of people can live in one household. Um, you have 
grandparents, parents, children, even great grandparents, all under one roof. And that's why you see all these people of various ages. They live in these houses and the houses are very close together. The population in China um, is one of the highest, actually in Beijing, one of the highest in China, in China because of all these people living so close together. One day, everything changed. Remember he said everything was the same. One day, everything changed. When I got home from playing, I found a shiny green bike parked in our yard. Hmm. How could that change things? So what I saw in the first picture, the kids were running around playing with the ball, playing with sticks, and now there's a bike parked outside. Uh, something else I want to show you that was interesting. I see here, um, this woman, I, I looked at her and she has this cloth on the man's back. And at first I thought, what is he doing? What's going on? I, I really had a deep wonder about that. But then I noticed this basin of water. I see the kettle, which meant she had to heat up the water. She added some warm water to that. She's washing, she's washing him. Here is a towel on his chair, which is I found was a bamboo chair. Here on the table is a fan, which I was told they still use today. These fans are made of palm leaves from the palm tree. So she's giving him a bath that's outside. So to give him a bath outside, it can't be cold outside to, to bathe him outside. She's just kind of help him out. And he probably can't get around much on his own. Interesting. So there's this bike. So back then, most families were not lucky enough to have a bike especially such a beautiful one as this. I couldn't stop staring at it. Hmm. So now I wonder, is the bike a gift for him? And he came home and was surprised to find it. Does it belong to someone else? Who does the bike belong to? What do you think? But this bike was not for me. My dad was going to use it to get to work. Please, Dad, I begged, let me ride it. Dad didn't answer. Now, what do you think Dad's answer is? How many of you think that Dad is going to say no because it's very important? Or how many of you think that Dad will say yes? Give me a thumbs up if you think Dad is going to say yes, you can ride the bike. Do this for yes. And if you think Dad is going to say no, do that. Count of three. Show me your answer. Yes or no? One, two, three. What do you think? Ah, okay. So a lot of you are thinking he's going to say no because he needs it for work. And that makes sense. It's an important tool, right? So, but when I saw a little smile sweep across his face, my heart pounded. I grabbed the handlebars and wheeled the bike out of our yard. So dad actually said yes. He surprised us all. My friends came running. They all stared at the shiny green bike. I also wonder, because I keep seeing this little girl here. Could that be his younger sister? What do you think? She seems to be everywhere. Above me, birds flew. Their chirps sounded like cheers as I practiced writing in my hutang in my neighborhood. Look at those beautiful buildings. It didn't take me long to figure out how to steer, but I was too short to sit on the seat and reach the pedals. I had to stand instead. My friends Chopin and Chopin ran after me shouting with joy. There they are. I guess everyone in the neighborhood is excited to see a bike too. Seems that way. I went faster and faster. Suddenly, the bike started to tip. What do you think is going to happen next? It's going faster and faster. The bike starts to tip. Hmm, you think it's going to fall? Flop. Before I knew it, I was flat on the ground. Uh, hope he doesn't get hurt too bad. Uh-oh, 
My pants had torn. My knees were bleeding as well. If mom saw them, she would know that I had been riding too, yes, too fast. So I snuck home in a hurry and I sewed up my pants. Oh boy, like the little trickster that one. That wasn't the only time I got hurt riding dad's bike, but I didn't care. Sometimes I even rode with no hands. Ay, ay, ay. So please do me a favor. All of you that have bikes, please be safe and hold the handles and go slow. Chopin and Chopin learned to ride the bike too. Hmm. All through the summer, we took turns riding it in the hutong. Now, wait a minute. When he asked his dad for permission to ride the bike that dad needed for work, did he also ask if his friends could ride the bike? I'm just wondering. Remember, always get your parents' permission for anything that you do. That's a sidebar. It's not in the story. I grew taller and taller. One day, I sat on the seat and I could reach the pedals with my tiptoes, oh, almost like a grown-up. My chest, my chest puffed with pride. Sit on the bike racks I, while I pedal, I told Chopin and Chopin. It will be just like we're acrobats in the circus. So now here he is, riding with his friends on the bike. Hmm. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Right. No one told him he could do that, and that's not safe. Oh boy. We turned the corner laughing, but I was going to, yes, fast. The bike started to wobble and wham. Look what happened. Did you think that was going to happen? I did too. He should have thought that. The bike landed hard. The chain fell off the gears. The wheels bent. We had to drag the bike home. Its loud creaks filled our ears and echoed like cries through the hutong. Now look at this picture. Can you look close enough at that bike? Can you see what the wheel looks like? Now where have we seen this picture before? Absolutely. That is the complete jacket with the bent wheel. I hung my head and waited for Dad, Dad to yell at me. Now, he said that he hung his head. So that means when he walked in, he's kind of bent over. Why do you think he did that? Why would he hang his head down? And he says, I waited for dad to yell at me. So he hung his head down and he assumes he's going to get yelled at. Um, what were his thoughts? What were his feelings? Hmm. Yes, he knew he had done something wrong. And he deserves to get in trouble and, and face consequences for that. He says, but when I peeked up at him, he just frowned at the bike and clicked his tongue. He clicked his tongue. What did that sound like? That's what it sounded like. That night, Dad stayed up late, silently fixing the bike. Anyway. Were you surprised by that? I certainly was. That was not the last time I broke dad's bike. Sometimes he didn't find out until the next morning. Then I had to go to, then he, I'm sorry, then he had to go to work on foot. Wait a minute. The bike is for dad to go where? He can get to work and it probably gets in there faster. But now because his son broke it, he has to go to work on foot, which means he's doing what to get to work? He's walking. Unbelievable. But he was never as quiet about it as he was that first time. Hmm. Many years later, Chopin and Chopin and I still, still talk about our childhood. We remember all the fun that we had and we laughed about our days in the hutong, riding around on dad's shiny green bike. And that concludes our story today bicycle in Beijing. Um, what are your thoughts about this entire story? So 
I have a task for you, a little challenge for you. I want you to, I want you to, excuse me, give me, based on the five, five elements of this story, give me a good retail of the story. Five elements. Let's look at the characters, sure. who's in the story, the setting, which is when and where, problem, which is what was going on, and the solution, how was the problem solved? There's also a theme of the story, which is why do you think uh, the author even told us this story? So let's focus on the theme first. The theme, um, there was a message there. There was a message for all of us in this story. And it, it surrounds um, the bike itself, why the father had the bike, um, you think the bike had any value to it? Absolutely. The bike was very important because dad needed it to do what? Go to work. So in terms of the theme, I think the boy learned how important the bike was overall. Um, and he, unfortunately, he learned that because he damaged the bike a few times. But... Did he get in trouble each time that he damaged the bike? Not at all. His dad was very kind um, and compassionate and patient with him. Father just stayed up at night fixing it. And sometimes he had to walk to work. So I think there was two messages there. There was one, the boy learned how important the bike was, but he also developed a deep respect for his father. I think he looked at his father very differently because remember he walked in with his head down expecting him to yell? That didn't happen. Instead, dad just went, fix the bike. When he first saw the bike, he thought, hey, this is for dad's work. I, I'm not going to be able to ride it. And dad smiled and let him go and continued to do that. So that was a, an important message. Um, so the challenge I want for you or the task that I have for you is I want you to, I know that you are all, various ages, um, you can either draw a picture for me or you can write for me. But I want you to be able to retell the story using um, these five elements. So when you retell the story, talk about the characters, talk about when and where the story took place, talk about the, about the problem and how it was solved. Just with the picture if you want um, or write about it. But Retell the story in your own words or by your own picture. And once you do that, send it to us at MJLA and your parents. This is where we need your parents. Remember I told you I need your parents around in the end? So your parents can email it to us at New Jersey, excuse me, NJLiteracy at gmail.com. Repeat that because I said it wrong. NJLiteracy at gmail.com. That is our email address. So your parents, your parents can take a picture of it with their phone, um, like a, take a picture of it and just email it to us. They can also um, go to our website, which is njliteracy.org, njliteracy.org. And parents, if you want to learn more about what we're doing, um, connect with us and talk to us, you can use either of those sources. We're also on Twitter at NJ Literacy, at NJ Literacy. And it's uh, for the Twitter, it's a capital N, capital J, capital L. So again, that's at NJ Literacy. And um, Instagram, Instagram is a little bit different. Instagram is New Jersey Lit Association, New Jersey Lit Association. Um, so I want to thank you all for your patience. Thank you for being good listeners um, and hope to hear from you soon. And take care. Bye-bye. Have a good evening and be well.